I am a professor uh, at Drexel, and as a professor, I like to think about really big questions and really big things. So I'm going to start with one, which is, what great things could a computationally literate society do? What I mean by that is, what if every single person, or almost every person you knew, could program and use programming to express themselves personally, to engage in, in civic action? What would that be like? We don't know because that's not the case. And in fact, before people could read and write, we didn't know what a, what a you know, literate society could do. And it turns out really great things. So in my research group, we try to develop tools that help spread computation. So where do we start? Traditional literacy starts when you're very young. You're surrounded by books, stories, words that are built, universes that are built with words and images. And this starts at a very young age. Today we have something, an analogy to this, that is computationally based. The web is a new kind of universe of stories. And it's not just built with words and images. There are data and videos and visualizations and all kinds of rich computational underpinnings here that we're not usually exposed to. We don't usually pull back the covers and see those things. All right, so my, my research group wanted to enable people to build beautiful things and expose them to some of how that works. And that's what I'm gonna tell you about today. So our goals for this new tool were actually to target storytelling and digital journalism. Uh, we wanted to enable people to make immersive, interactive, bespoke content. And we wanted this tool to be an on-ramp for computational skills. So, uh, so when you encounter programming later, maybe you'd be a little bit better prepared. So our design principles were to make code make sense. We want to expose people to a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS. Um, we don't want to get in the way, so we want to embed tools in existing workflows and ecosystems. And we wanted you know, to support composition, help people make beautiful things on the web, uh, not just computational things. So our, our inspiration here was, uh, if you remember the Snowfall article in the New York Times in 2012, uh, a lot of people noticed that because it was gorgeous. And so um, you can see this is the sort of the, the, the splash with the blowing snow, and it immediately engages you in this world of um, where this avalanche happened, this news story. And if you look at the whole article, this isn't actually the whole article, it's kind of condensed a little bit. But you can see that, um, you can't see it so well in a static image, but as you were scrolling through, these images uh, were responsive, the uh, videos were responsive. And you can imagine that this is a very complex kind of article to put together for someone who's a beginner or who hasn't got a whole lot of background in, in web development. But when you pull it apart, you can see that actually what we've got here is a bunch of building blocks that taken one by one are not that overwhelming. And so what we did was created a tool that would help people take this step-by-step -step building block approach to building complex content. And that's where Snowball comes in. And so I'm gonna show you a fairly brief demonstration, like 90 seconds or something like that, of just a couple of things that Snowball can do um, and of course, please do go and try it out on your own. So this is your standard WordPress installation. You'll see that on the left it has, is my video going? Let's see. Ah, there we go, okay. So it's not working on my screen, that's why. So here I've created a, a new post. Welcome to Saturday morning, and by the way, congratulations on being here, I wasn't sure. Um, so we scroll down, we see we've got all these building blocks that we can use. These are our basic ones. There are also um, social media, we've got some different kinds of data, that can, visualizations that can be embedded. Um, I can't see very well, so I'm not sure what I'm clicking on over there. But we've got a splash screen, we added a splash block. Um, it's pre-populated with the name of the, of the post. I'm selecting a background image. I'm sorry, yeah, I am selecting a background image. Uh, my text no longer can show up, so I turn it white. And so you can see that there are some very basic kinds of um, uh, design features that you can use. Um, as you are building, here's a text block, uh, 
you're going to be able to dive into that code, the underlying code, the CSS uh, window down there. I'm typing in to turn the text a different color. I've turned it teal. I can also go back and you know turn it red, and I immediately see the feedback. So if the tool doesn't give you the ability to express something the way you want to, you can go in there and start monkeying with it. But you can also do something straight out of the box. So the hope is that this gives people the right hooks to start developing more computationally intensive posts. Um, okay, so here is a nice little uh, data presentation in a choropleth. Um, this is the Pikachu population. Everyone knows that Pennsylvania hunted Pikachu nearly to extinction. So we lower that and you'll see up in the map that uh, Pennsylvania, now the population, is represented by a lighter color. So you can kind of play with these data visualizations, integrate them into your posts. This is what we just created. You know, it's, it's fairly, fairly rough. But you can imagine that you can create very complex and engaging posts with a tool like this. Um, so that is the basics for Snowball. Uh, with, this is an ongoing project. We're actually collaborating with Mozilla Foundation. They have some similar kinds of projects that are seeking to engage people in building the web and in doing so create a population that is able to express themselves computationally and with more sophistication, uh, increasingly more sophistication uh, as more and more people move online. Um, and we're conducting studies to measure computational skills and understanding that go with creating content like this and becoming better able to, to engage with the, the um, possibilities of expression on the web. So, um, so when you give people the right tools to think with, they can think in new ways. And I just want to encourage everyone in this room, because I think we're all designers and technologists, as we develop the platforms uh, that enable people to connect and communicate, we're building the platforms on which they are doing really important human things. So we were developing for journalists, but you're out there developing for whoever you're developing for um, and designing for students and whoever that might be. Uh, so think about the fact that your tools are enabling them to think in new and different ways. And it brings a new perspective to the kind of work that you're already doing. I can, uh, I can almost guarantee it. So, uh, so that's only eight minutes, but I'm going to leave you for at least a moment with the contact information for my research group and give specific uh, call out to uh, Tom Park, who's sitting right up here. He's the developer of Snowball uh, and the project lead. Um, and we had some wonderful Drexel students, Sakrit and Brian, who also worked on this. So please feel free to contact us in the future if you have any questions. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and switch this over for our next presenter.